Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. So I guess we can say this is the night that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it, huh? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let us open up in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this, another opportunity, Lord God, just to be able to come before you, Lord, once again, Lord God. Father God, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for blessing us to see another year, Lord God. Father God, as we look to you today, Lord God, I pray tonight, Lord God, that you would shadow us with your presence. Father God, I pray that you would fill this temple, Lord God. Father God, I pray that tonight, Lord God, that you would move in such a mighty way, Heavenly Father, that we would go into a new year, Heavenly Father, just praising and honoring you, Lord God, for what you've already done, Lord God. As we prepare to go into this new year of expectation, Lord God, of things that you are about to do in our lives. Father God, we just thank you right now, and we give you all honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Every praise belongs to God. Now, I just want to do a praise check. Are you ready to do a praise check? Can I hear you clap your hands? Because every praise, even your hand clap, gives glory to God. Amen. He says to clap your hands, all you people. So can I hear you clap, clap for Jesus? All right. Yeah, your, your clapping is working there. What about, what about a stump? Can you stump for Jesus? Yeah, yeah, come on. We have the victory. The enemy is under our feet. And when we praise God, even with the stump, we're giving him praise. Right? All right. Your praise. What about lifting up your hands like this? Can you lift them up? Give him praise. Every praise belongs to God. What, what about that dance? You got a little dance for Jesus? You got a little praise dance? Yeah, we got a praise dance. Because we're going to end 2017 with high praise. You got, you got, a, you got, a, you got a little dance, a little hop. Can I see you jump? Leap for joy. All right. Now, let's sing praises to him. Can I get a hallelujah? Hallelujah. Okay, wait. Can I get a hallelujah? Hallelujah. Let's try that again. Can we say hallelujah to the King of Kings? Hallelujah. All right. Can you give him a thank you, Jesus?
you were like, Lord, I know you're my provider. And you didn't necessarily see it manifest yet, but you put the praise on it and that worship on it. And all of a sudden, God moved on your behalf. Amen. And so I just want you to set your mind on the testimony you have of what God has done for you this year. Has he been good? Has he been better than good? So we're just going to sing a little bit of that. He is a good, good father. Hallelujah. Because you're a good, good father. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. And I am loved by you. That's who I am. That's who I am. Can you help me sing that? You're a good, good father. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. And I'm love. That's who I am. That's who I am. You're a good, good father. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. And I'm loved by you. That's who I am. That's who I am. That's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways. Somebody testify to that. Hallelujah. You are perfect in all of your ways, oh Lord. Can you guys help me sing that? You are perfect in all of your ways. Oh Lord, you are perfect. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect.
isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Oh, what a Savior! And I'm expecting great things in 2018. I know with you by my side, you never fail, Lord. You are perfect in all your ways, Lord. Even when the door closes, Lord, you open up a window, Father God. Even when the naysayers are against me, Father God, you raise up a standard, oh, Father. You give me victory. It's victory in you. Hallelujah. You are good, Father. He is so good. All right. Hallelujah. Is he good? Is the Lord good? Good. All right. Now, this is a new song. I want you guys to help us sing it. It just says, Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. Amen. Does anybody have that testimony? All right. Listen up. Lord, you are good. So good, Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. I can't praise you enough. Even if I try, cause you've been so good to me.
happens I feel the anointing I just come up here amen and I'll my it was evident earlier today man you you guys wonder we get up here and my wife can't speak or something like that or for me I get goosebumps but that's the anointing amen, amen. now the anointing is the burden removing yoke destroying power of God but there's also something called the glory amen See, when the glory cloud, man, see? Now, God will shadow you. Come on, he'll overshadow you. Come on, he'll cover your life with his presence, amen? He'll cover your life with his very presence, amen? That's what we need in the earth. The manifested power and presence of a loving God. But see, when we release a heartfelt worship to God, you know what? Because sometimes, like when you reflect on, like Sister Dina was singing, when you reflect on, wait a minute, you've been so good to me. You've been better than good to me. You know what I mean? Come on. Is anybody in here with me? Amen. Glory to God. And you just, you, you almost enter into a place where you have, you're at a loss of words. Like, I don't have anything else I could say, Lord, but just thank you. That's all I can do is just say thank you. Because you have shown yourself to be faithful to me time and time and time again. You've done it over again. Glory to God. Even when my faith was low, his faithfulness was high. Y'all with me? This is the God we get to serve. And he's been that good. 
I think sometimes people don't really know how good God has been to, you know, you. Amen. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, you just don't know. See, they don't know. They might know you, but they don't know. Come on, somebody. They don't know the depths of your journey. They don't know. Come on, somebody. I, woo, I feel the anointing in here. See, they might know you, but they don't know the depths of your struggle. Come on. They don't know the how deep, how deep your praise goes because God went that deep. Come on, God went that deep. God went that deep to heal you. God went that deep to deliver you. Your neighbor might know you, but they don't know the intimate details of your struggle and what God is. Man, I got anybody in this church where, like, you know what, if God didn't do it, you know, you found you would have cracked already. Come on, somebody. I got anybody in this place that if God didn't do it, you know for sure you wouldn't be right here tonight. If it was not for the power of God, if it was not for the unfailing love from God, you wouldn't have made it. Then when I meditate on that, man, when nobody had your back, Huh? When nobody had your back, God had it. I'm talking about when you didn't have your own back. See, some of y'all, I know I got some people up in here, man, where you know what? You wasn't even saying the right stuff to yourself. You wasn't even encouraging yourself. Come on, you, you were your worst enemy. God even kept you from, oh, y'all ready for this? He's such a keeper. He kept you from you. He kept you from you. He didn't let you destroy you. That, this, see, that's what I'm talking about. See, now when you when you get to worshiping God like that, huh? God kept us through this year. Oh, and of course he has greater in store. But let's be a people that are mindful of this, man. And he's just like, oh, Lord. Let's just take, I want you to take a moment, amen. I'm just operating under the orders of the Holy Ghost. You just go ahead and take a moment and right there in your own space that you have in this church right here, in your chair, whatever. Imagine this. Now, imagine this. The doorway to the presence of God is opened up for you. And so you could see it and you see you see the glow, right? You see the glow, but then now you feel something right next to you. And in yourself, you're hesitant. Now this is not prescripted, this is Holy Ghost, so just follow me. In yourself, you feel hesitant. You're like, oh. Now, what you see is what you want. But you're hesitant to go further. And God is saying, come closer. But you feel resistance, but then you also feel like a guiding. Y'all with me? You feel like a pushing. You feel like a nudging. But this nudge is gentle not frightening you at all but it's something that keeps you going forward but where are you going to this place that you see that's been open for you you know what that is that's the presence of God and it's open to you and you know what that nudge is that's the Holy Ghost see the Holy Ghost is the one right next to you saying come on now you in and of yourself, you're hesitant. You don't, because we, it's in our nature. We don't want to get that close. 
We don't feel worthy. We don't, all these things get in the way. We don't feel like we can get that close. But the Holy Ghost is right there saying, come on. Come on. Then you find yourself getting closer. And all of a sudden, the presence and the anointing starts to, oh, come on, see. You start getting close enough, you start breaking down. Man. Now, church, even you guys watching, just, you got to follow me in this. God is trying to get you so close to him to where his power consumes you. But we, in and of ourselves, ourselves, we have a fear. We have a fear of that. We don't want to get that close. Oh, I can't. I'm not worthy. I don't know. I, but then here's the Holy Ghost. Come on. Come on. So now it goes from a gentle nudge. Y'all ready for this? I got, some, I got somebody in here following me on this thing. It comes from a, it goes from a gentle nudge. Then you're getting closer. What happens when you get closer to God? Anybody? We should know, right? Isn't that what we should be here for, right? We should be trying to get closer to God. Have you guys ever felt God's presence? You'd be surprised at how many people in the church have never felt it. Amen? I have felt it in a way where it's a, I felt it in this building even, to where it's a line. And I've, I've felt it with a lot of you, that as you come and you cross that line, something happens that is beyond you. And all of your strength and your toughness and all that goes away. Well, this vision God has given me right now, this is for us, this is for tonight, it's right now, it's Holy Ghost revelation. He is pushing us and ushering us. He wants you to be closer to God this year than you've ever been in your life. He wants, he's pushing you, he's pushing you, he's pushing you. Now, here's what happens. This is what's exciting to me as God is unfolding this right now. As I get closer, I'm too weak. Oh, come on. I can't, I can't stand in his presence. I'm too weak. His power is too great. I'm going to collapse. But you know what happens if I collapse? I don't make it all the way. So then now you know what the Holy Ghost does? Instead of nudging me, he now carries me. Oh, come on, man. He now carries me into the pre it. Glory to God. Thank you. He just carries me. So here it is. We've been on this journey, right? We all been on a journey trying to get closer to God. And there's times we want to push away. We want to, and we don't feel like, oh man. And then the enemy comes and he has his tactics and his schemes and he tries to get you to get off track. But the Holy Ghost is, is keeping you. But now you're getting closer. See, now I believe that God's getting ready to do this for those who are willing. He's going to bring you to that place to where you have that spiritual collapse. It's not a bad thing. Because many of us have gone as far as we can go. We've traveled as far as we could travel. But God says you've not yet made it. And I am going to, see, when you get close enough and you get there through worship, that's why we've been focusing on being thankful and all the stuff that's happening. But you get closer, his power, imagine that. There he is, God the Father, the throne. What would you do? Some of you say, well, I would run to it. Nope, you wouldn't. It's not in you to do that. Because that power is too great. What you would do is be like, oh. <laughs> and that's why the Holy Ghost, once you reach the place where you are emptied out, church. 
Well, you reach the place where you have nothing left to give. You reach that place. You reach that place. What's going to happen for you? There goes the Holy Ghost. And he's going to carry you right in to the presence of God. Amen. Amen. How many of y'all want to go? You want to go? And I'm not talking about something that's going to happen when you get to heaven. This is a revelation that's going to change us now and this time. Because even the strongest Christian can only go so far. And as far as we can go is not far enough. Y'all with me? And so I just want you to now, I'm just have Brother Sean just keep just playing, just let the anointing flow. But I want you to enter in, amen. It's just can, can you, is it okay? Can we can we have a moment of worship? Is that possible in these times? Is it possible in these times? I want you to just enter in. Just worship God. Just just find yourself in the presence of God. But then let there be a genuine desire to go further. Amen. Because he's here. He's looking to take you further than you've ever gone before. Come on. Don't worry about me. We already had our Sunday service earlier. This is about you getting prepared to go where God's going to take you. Just worship him. Come on, right there in your chair, wherever. Just worship him. Let's take a moment. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. presence of God see God is saying that my people they need to know that the door is open see God is at all places at all times but you have to come in unto him church we cannot wait for God to come out to us you know what he sent his son out to us now we receive his son now we can come in to him that's what you need we've all traveled some distance mm. I'm just being obedient I need you right there. I, well, I don't need you to do it, but God has given an invitation right now for you to go beyond yourself. See, God says every burden. There's been an accumulation of burdens piled upon many of us this year. Heavy weights, weariness, 
And sometimes it makes our journey to get to him a little more difficult. But God says, I'm with you. To the point where I'm going to carry you. But you're going to enter in to the presence of this wonderful God. Amen. What's going to happen for your life? What's going to happen through your life? When the Holy Ghost has carried you in to the presence of a living, loving Father. What kind of strength are you going to get? What kind of hope will be restored? What kind of healing will manifest? Oh. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. He's got it for you, church. What a sweet presence. Mm, glory to God. Amen. See? That's what we need. Isn't he good? Do we trust him? Do we trust him to go further than we've ever gone in our lives? Let's all be seated just for a moment. Man. In his presence, amen, is the fullness of all that we could ever need, desire, want. It's right there. But it's like sometimes, and, and granted, we have desires. That's okay. God gives you those desires. It's okay. But God is saying, my presence is greater than any one desire that you can ever have. It's greater. But I'm wanting you to come in Come in a little closer, amen? Be willing to surrender yourself. Amen? You know, as we get prepared for 2018, it's a good thing to have high expectations, to have hopes, to have desires, all that kind of stuff. And God's got that for us, amen? Don't get me wrong. But God has done some shifting, amen, in the spirit. And I'm telling you right now, what we're going to focus on this year, starting this year out, is being yielded unto God. Being completely emptied out. Because sometimes we would try to pack in the things we want and put them into our lives and put God in and all that. But God is, whoa, glory to God. This is, this is going to be the year of the yielded vessel. Ah, come on. The yielded vessel. God's not looking for fancy vessels, polished, perfect. He's looking for yielded. Those that say, not my will, but thy will be done. Do with me, Lord, whatever you want. Doesn't matter. After all, I'm empty. That's going to be our focus, amen? That's giving you a little prelude to what we're going to be talking about, but that's what God has been ministering to me. You guys can prophesy, you can pray, you can speak in tongues, you can do all that stuff, but that's not even what I'm looking for this year. I'm looking for the yielded vessels. I'm looking for those that would simply 
offer themselves. I said today, earlier today, that your sacrifice seed is your life. Would you be willing to lay it at the altar? Entirely. Without reservation. It's all for your good. Amen. It's all for your good. So, see, as we worship God, that, that prepares us. You guys see how the atmosphere is set in this building? It's set right now. People watching at home. See, the anointing is not restricted by a building. That's why we have to put this stuff out there on the airways because how I many know oh, this same anointing come on that you feel right now glory to God if somebody connects with us come on somebody connects in China how many know they can get the same anointing spilling out in their lives amen come on they can connect with us in India and they can get the same anointing come on somebody and it'll touch them and they be transformed forever amen, amen. hmm I'm excited about tonight. We're going to have some time in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Um, let me just, let me give you a, a, a few scriptures. Amen. I just really got, I feel the heat on my hands, man. I'm telling you, I feel like the, because God will pour, he'll pour oil, he'll pour oil out from heaven. Y'all know that? He'll do, he, I sometimes, you know what, man, I was here today and now it's coming to me. It's making sense. And I was, and not that it, everything has to make sense, but it's supposed to make faith. But I was at my chair and I just had come in from my office. And I just went and I went to lift my hands to pray, you know, like I do in prayer, praise. I didn't even get the chance to tell my wife. But I went and man, I I got dizzy. I was like, I thought I was gonna fall out. I said, what? And then initially, I thought, man, I must be having like, I'm just be honest with you guys, hey amen. Even though I'm the pastor, sometimes, you know, we don't connect things spiritually right away. I thought, man, I must have ate something yesterday. <laughs> I must have ate something and it's trying to, you know. So I started, man, I started rebuking it. I'm, you were healed and speaking in tongues. and, But then it wasn't until later so, oh because I felt like out of control I felt like I couldn't control it and I, I took one step back and it oh, I got back but I felt like what is this and now I know and I didn't know this until you know as time progressed so that's like what if God's power comes on you like that? Like all of us that are so controlled and in control and all this stuff, what if he just moves on you? What are you going to do? But see, if you're surrendered to that, you won't be afraid of it. Now, I believe that this year God is going to use us like never before. God's going to flow his power through us like never before where miracles signs wonders greater manifestations will start to come forth amen but it's going to come forth because his power is flowing through us amen I want us to look here at uh, John 14.10. John 14.10. This is Holy Ghost. This is no prepared sermon. Amen. So you guys can just stay comfortable. <laughs> Amen. I mean, if you want, you know. But I'm... I just got to give you a couple scriptures. Amen. Let me give you a couple scriptures. Clap it up for our praise team, man. What a, just an anointed group of people willing to surrender. And let's clap it up for our, our audio visual team. Amen. Come on. These guys are working hard. I got brother Greg, man. 
<laughs> he came back and I must have gave him like one day off. He just had his his leg was barely healed. <laughs> I said, that's okay, brother. You don't have to stand today. <laughs> no, but he's just got the heart. Amen. These guys have a heart. And, and let me just say thank you to everybody that's been serving them. The ushers, the greeters, the parking lot ministry, the children's ministry. I mean, the nursery. So many people have just been blessing us. Amen. Amen. All the ministries in this church. We're so thankful for that. I just felt the need to share that. Um, but in John 14, 10, he says here, this is Jesus speaking. Believe it's not that I am in the Father and the Father in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells in me. And what does he say next? He doeth the works. So this is Jesus explaining what's going on. And here we are in this time, we're living life after the cross. And so God is saying, just like I flow through Jesus. Come on, anybody in here that believes me? Just like I flow through Jesus. A matter of fact, what I did through Jesus was just scratching the surface. I believe we're entering into a time where God wants to manifest his power. Come on, how many of you want to be used by God to where God will tell you, lay hands on him? Yes. And you have very little to do with it, but because you are that yielded vessel, it's not just enough to be empty. You have to be yielded. So when you're yielded, now God says, you know, I can do whatever I want to do with this vessel. Any y'all with me? Amen. I can do whatever I want to do with this vessel. And guess what? His power. How many, anybody in here, would you, would you be okay if God used you to touch somebody who can't walk? Amen. Amen. You know, my wife shared a powerful testimony, and this has happened at a church where we know a person who goes to this church or was somebody affiliated with their ministry. But a man was on an airplane and the airplane landed. He went to get off and, and it looks like he was kind of walking down. Maybe, you know, sometimes they land and if you go to Hawaii or whatever, you get off. You know, you don't go through the tunnel. You go down the stairs and get off. It, it seemed like it may have been something similar to that, but he falls, he made it through the whole flight, but the man falls and dies. Amen. He hits his head and he dies. And we would hear that and say, wow, that's terrible. Don't you think? I made the whole flight and then you just die getting off the plane? Man. Well, you know what happened? God had a yielded vessel. Come on, I just, anybody? God had a yielded vessel, what, on the plane. See, what we tend to do is think, well, it must have been their time. That's not always the case, church. It's not always the case. We have an enemy who's looking to steal, kill, and destroy. So it's not always the case for everybody to die. God had a yielded vessel on that plane. And it was a pastor from Africa, and he, every, it, the man was dead, but the pastor went over there, stood over him, and he started speaking. He probably was speaking in tongues, but then the words that they kept hearing is, not today. Not today. And I'm not telling you a story that happened in the 70s. Are you guys with me? I mean, this is recent. You know what happened? said, not today, not today. This man came back to life. The man who died came back to life because God had a yielded vessel on the plane. Would God use you? You, you guys, what is this? Is this, it's because think about it. It's, it's beyond just getting our breakthrough. I mean, we're going to believe God and we want greater manifestation. 
But I don't know about you, but I'm more excited about laying hands on somebody and them getting healed than I am getting a new house. Amen. I'm just saying, I don't know where I'm at. I'm more excited, come on, about raising the dead, come on, somebody, than I am about getting a bunch of money in my bank account. Amen. I'll take that too, amen, but I'm not excited about that. I'm excited about somebody in need of a healing. And God, see that? So what does this mean? A person can be already dead. But if you're a yielded vessel, then now God's power can flow through you. And you can touch somebody, quicken them. Amen? And they can be raised from the dead. Now, Jesus says this here, the Father's in me. But do you believe it? John 14, 10, the Father's in me. But then he says, the Father that dwells in me. So remember that example I gave you when I started speaking, that you're getting closer to God, right? The Holy Ghost is carrying you. you he's not carrying you yet. He's walking you, pushing you, walking you. You get so close, you can't stand anymore. The Holy Ghost has to carry you in there. Well, when you're carried in there like that, God's power consumes you. So now you see why it wasn't a problem for Jesus to do what he did because he was already consumed. Amen. Amen. He was already consumed by the power of God. Now, what does God do this for so that now we can make a difference in the earth? If we know the enemy is looking to steal, kill and destroy don't you know he's doing that today? Don't you know he's taking lives? People are dying of sickness. They're dying of accidents. They're dying of injuries, all this stuff. But not in every case is that, in fact, God's will. Amen? So now let's look at verse 11. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very work's sake. So now we're in a time where there's not as many works, huh? So what if we said that to people? What if you said that on your job? Believe me for the very work's sake. There's a manifestation of your power, amen? Now I know you live a good life and... You know, I, I'm full of peace. Can't you see it? That's wonderful. I'm not knocking that at all. But how many know God's looking to take us a little past that? Can I get amen right there? Because uh, how many know everybody don't see your peace like that? They don't go home with you. <laughs> but they'll see you if you go lay hands on a dead person and they get up. They'll see you if you go to the hospital and pray over somebody and all of a sudden the doctor comes in there and goes to check them and all of a sudden everything that was wrong with them is right now. What happened? Oh, God sent a yielded vessel. Now, he says, Jesus said, believe me for the very work's sake. Now, look at this. Now, we got to do something with this. Verse 12, just in the King James. He says, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me. Y'all with me? The works that I do, shall he do what? Also? So what does that mean? Let's just don't even deal with the greater yet. Just deal with the also. How many of y'all would be okay with doing the also? Amen. Say, I, I wouldn't mind if I was able to feed 5,000. That's just men, not, not counting women and children. How many of y'all would be cool with that? I mean, come on, somebody, you out at the park, amen, glory to God, you out at the park, and then you just say, y'all sit down, get comfortable, and you pray over your little picnic basket, and then there's an endless supply going out. How many of y'all would be okay with that? Amen. That's just the also. Amen. How many of y'all be okay with going into a house full of faithless people? Come on. And somebody's dead in the back room. 
But then you go up in and see some of y'all already, I ain't going in there. I'm talking about yielded vessels. Amen. You go in the house and you go up in there and you kick everybody out. We don't do that. Huh? We get in a family situation, everybody's weeping and moaning and crying and what do we do? We try to comfort them. That's all we know to do. Amen. That's all we do is we hug them. Come, it's going to be all right. Well, we say, I'm going to have to kick you out. Go on outside with all that crying. <laughs> I'm not telling you to be mean. Now, all this stuff I'm talking about has got to be led by the Holy Ghost. So don't just try to jump into this and think you can do it. It's got to be led by the Holy Ghost. But would you allow it? Anybody? Would you allow God to use you? Okay, I need you to go up in there and kick everybody out. And I want you to talk to the dead person. Huh? Yeah, this is just the also. We're talking about the also. Not, we're not talking about, you know, the greater works yet. Because the also is what he did. You know what greater is? Dang. I just caught, I just got to, what? It's like, God, how you going to have me being, doing more than Jesus? You want to know how? Anybody? Think about this. You can only do greater because Jesus is like in you too. So you're living life after the cross. Jesus was living life before the cross and the things that he'd done that he did in the earth, it was before the cross. And so what does that mean? Before the payment, come on somebody, for sin was paid. It hadn't been paid yet. So now you're doing works after what? The payment has been paid. So guess what? Death has been stripped of his power. Amen. Come on, somebody. So you could technically go in there and raise up a graveyard if God leads you to do it. Because the sting of death is gone. When Jesus was walking the earth, the sting of death was still there. So now he's in you. Now you got, how many of y'all believe you got Jesus? Now you got the Holy Ghost. Didn't he say, I'm going to give you my spirit? Amen. And you got the Father. And you. What can four of y'all do? Anybody? See, we're getting tricked in this world. The world is tricking us and, and, and we're limited in our own thinking. But it's the yielded vessel that God is looking to do. Uh, looking to use, I should say. And then so he says here, you're going to do the worst that I do. You shall do all so. You shall do all so. Now, in the Amplified, he says, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, if anyone steadfastly believes in me. What does steadfastly mean? Continuing. You cannot be wavering. You can't be moved. You got to keep believing this. You started out believing it. Keep believing it. Now, if he steadfastly believes in me, he himself will be able to do things that, what, I do. Mm. And now, look at this. And, let's just read it and amplify it. And he will do even greater than these. What is that? Like, what is greater than, Anybody? I'm not, this is, this is not a, I'm not trying to trick y'all. But I, you know, like I'm, I read this and I'm going like, wow, Lord, well, huh? You got to give me a revelation of that because like what is greater than what Jesus was doing? Now imagine it multiplied. See, when Jesus was doing this, there wasn't a lot of people doing it. Come on. Oh, come on. When Jesus was doing this, there wasn't a lot of people doing it. 
What if we in the church become those yielded vessels and get our minds off of needs and wants and desires and all the carnal things in life and we say, well, I'm just going to yield myself, God, whatever you want to do. What if we had a whole church full of faith walking in the earth, raising people from the dead, going up in hospitals, Huh? Laying hands on sick folks. And they're getting healed. I'm talking about this is just one church. What if the whole church had this power? So now we're talking about greater works, huh? Because it's multiplied. Amen? It's multiplied. And then we even continue with this thing. What if you start speaking a word of healing on somebody on the phone? Y'all looking at me like, mm. Praise God. I'm talking about greater power. What? Come on, what if somebody, man, you mess around and get an anointing and it'd be on your text? <laughs> what? <laughs> be healed. Ba -ba -ba sinned. <laughs> and here they are reading. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> ha! Hey. Huh? Yeah. Why not? Why not? The devil's trying to get us to focus on, oh, we don't have enough, or I'm this and I'm that. Come on, God said, greater works. Amen? Amen. Yielded vessels. Now, I just gave you that. That's just a little extra, amen? I wasn't even planning on getting into that until next week. But I want you to be excited about what God is looking to do. He's not looking for perfect people. He's not looking for polished Everybody's crisp and got it together. He's looking for empty. He's looking for yielded. He's looking for those that might say, well, it ain't much, God, but it's all I got. Huh? Not looking for people to have all this stuff they can do for God. He's looking for people to say, it ain't much, Lord, but it's all I got. And I give it to you. That's why I say your sacrifice seed is yourself. Let his power flow through you. Amen? Amen. Now, who could you touch? Now, he says, greater works than these shall you do because I go unto my father. And that's what he's letting us know. I'm going unto my father. So now, guess what? When he's given this indication that I'm going to my father, this means the work is completed. So the payment has been paid. So now you will have power bestowed upon you. Now you end up being. Now, if it's God doing the work. Not ourselves. But it's God doing the work. Y'all believe it's possible? See, we might not have that much confidence in each other. Now, we'll love each other and all that, but some of y'all, you know, you're like, ah, oh, well, uh, you know, I really don't know. Pastor's that anointed to be going up in no graveyard. <laughs> Believe me, I'm trying to get revelation too, man. <laughs> so I, I ain't mad at you if you think that because I'm like, Lord, you got to help me with that. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Amen? Amen? But the focus and the emphasis is not to be on us. You see that? So it's really not supposed to be whether or not I think Brother Lee got the power to do it. That has nothing to do with it. It's can the, oh, come on. It's can the God in him do it? Can the God that's in him, oh, come on. Can the God in him do this or that? So you start thinking about your future, your life, what you want to manifest. All that kind of stuff. Can the God in you do it? That's a question, huh? So go to Jeremiah 32. Then we're going, man, I'm just excited. See, now, I want you to be excited about coming to God and being emptied out before him because I want you to be excited about his power taking over. Not only, come on, how many know if, uh, 
if God is using you to fix other people's stuff, how many know your stuff's going to be fixed? Huh? If God is using you to fix other people's stuff, you're going to be all right, man. But now we've got to have this faith. So it starts out with being that yielded vessel just emptied out before God. So we entered into worship. See, that's how we get closer to God. And you start thanking God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Praise you and all that. And you get closer to God. Then now you get consumed by him. Now, don't just stay there. Now it's like, what you want to do with me, Lord? Amen. What if God changed up what you thought he was going to do? I got anybody in here that's okay with that? What if God changed it? You say, I want to do this for the kingdom. God says, okay, but I'm changing it now. Would any of you, go, you guys be fine with that? Yes. I'll be okay with it. Because it's going to be him. Now, if we, if we live our lives like this, we never get overconfident in ourselves. But also, we never get selfish or become selfish with our gifts that God has bestowed upon us. So sometimes you can hold that thing in and be selfish with it. But God says, it's me anyway, right? Or has it become you? Amen? So when you're yielded, it's never about you. And so now, Jeremiah 32, 17. Let's look at this in the... I mean, excuse me, just the King James. Jeremiah 32, 17. Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm. And there is nothing. You guys, the Bible say nothing. So what does nothing mean? Like, so can we say that? You know, we can, we can go Ebonics on it, man. Nothing. I don't care what you got. Ain't nothing. You ain't got nothing. It's too hard for God. What Do, do you live your life like that? Or are you like, ain't nothing too hard for God? Amen. And so it doesn't matter why. He's given his credentials. He made heaven and the earth by his outstretched arm. And there's nothing too hard for him. Amen. Go to Jeremiah 32, 27. See it? Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. There's the question that you have to answer. Is there anything too hard for me? Hmm. So not only can you get what you've been believing God for, you can get your breakthrough, but then God can use you. You think it would be too hard for God to fill you with his power in such a way that you now go lay hands on the sick and they get healed. Is that too hard for him? You think it's too hard for God to pay off all your bills and then empower you to pay somebody else's bills off. Come on, I got anybody in here that's believing me. Can't remove birds when you're carrying one. That's why you got to get the anointing. It's the burden removing yoke destroying power of God. Amen? Amen? But now, is that too hard for God? Can God do it? Amen? It's like, well, you know, I don't know that much about that, Lord. And God is saying, I know you don't know. That's why you need to be yielded. If Listen, let me tell you something. If you're riding in a car and you lost, and somebody's with you, that knows where they're going, you might just need to let them drive. <laughs> Amen? Because some of y'all are stubborn. I mean, you be like, we be, I don't care. And they're like, I know how to get us out of here. And they can't just tell you because, you know, you're too prideful to listen. They're trying to tell you, turn left. You're like, no, I know, I, I know, I, I know this. I'm, now it's now it's looking familiar. I'm just coming to get, it's coming to me now. Now see, I remember that. I remember that tree. You don't remember that tree. You lost. <laughs> That's another tree, man. 
Amen? You might need to let them drive. Well, if, if we're understanding that with God, all this stuff is possible, how about we just get out the way? I don't need any explanation. Just, I just need to be uh, yielded before him and just let him have his way. Now, God has promised us wonderful things, but we've got to be a people that believe him, that believe in his ability and in his power. Amen. Now, he can use you to bless somebody else. But how I many know he can also bless you? He's going to do it. Amen. Come on. How I many you got things you believe in God for? But do you know enough about him to even believe that he can bring that to pass? God is calling us to intimacy. Amen. A greater level of intimacy so that now we can come before him. And we can bow and worship him, be consumed by his power and his presence and let him take over and let him do whatever he wants to do through us. They sing a lot of songs about giving yourself away and all that kind of stuff. And but what would God do with you? That yielded vessel. Now, what could God bring to pass in your life? We should all be we have to live by faith, right? Matter of fact, we're supposed to walk by faith and not by sight. Second Corinthians, what, five, seven, I think it is. We walk by faith and not by sight. Now, what is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. How many of you got some things that you're hoping for? Amen. Now, I'll just share with you just in this little bit of time tonight that God's power is that great. He will flow through you. Now, you would be, I believe it. I believe it in my spirit. We're coming into those times where we're going to have evidence. Supernatural manifestation coming through God's people, flowing through God's people. To where we ourselves will go, whoa. Hey, Lord, that was pretty awesome. Amen. But I also believe he's going to show himself strong on our behalf because we have things that we're believing him for. But see, you've got to get to that place in your life where you can trust him enough to believe he'll use you to help others. But he's also going to help you. So you have desires, right? If you don't, you should. We should all have desires. But anything that you're believing God for, you've got to be doing just that. Believing him for it. Now I've shared he's going to, greater works are going to manifest. I believe that's going to start to happen in 2018. You know, the church is not filled with just regular people. How are you going to be regular and you got the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost? Come on, you got all this anointing, you're going to be regular? Ah, uh, you know, I'm just keep to myself, man. You know, I don't like to get in nobody's business. Don't worry about getting in their business. How about you take care of God's business? Because God, listen, I'm going to tell you. Now, y'all hearing this is coming from, this is under the anointing. Don't be afraid if God starts telling you somebody's stuff. And he'll use you and you go up to a stranger and you start speaking on them. And they start going, oh. What is this? Is this candy camera? What the, how do you know? Can any of y'all handle that? Come on, can you handle a co-worker breaking down, crying on you? Like, were you like, oh, I didn't do nothing? <laughs> come on, you lay hands on me. You say, well, because some of you, your boldness is going to come on you. You're going to get courageous. You can say, well, let's pray. I have a habit of saying, let's pray, but I'm like, let's pray right now, right here. It doesn't matter to me. Well, what if you start doing that? Come on, you're praying for somebody, and they start falling under the power of the anointing. Yeah, oh, man. Yeah, Walmart. You're praying and, and you're trying to keep them up because you don't want nobody to think you did something to them. Amen. You don't want nobody to think, man, you like, oh, it was not me. I didn't do nothing, man. I just barely touched them. Got that little the Walmart people coming out looking at you crazy. Huh? What if that happens? You don't think God could use you to, to help a perfect stranger like that? 
Like all the, we're not going to get everybody's phone number and call them. Amen. That ain't how it's going to work. You're going to have divine appointment. Stuff just starts happening. But now you have to be convinced that it's not too hard for God. It's God that does the work. Glory to God. I'm on the greater work side because I'm living life after the cross. So I should get used to this. Amen. Glory to God. I'm supposed to be not. Oh, I just go to church. I leave all that for pastor, man. I need, you need somebody to lay hands on you. Hold on. Let me call Pat. Pastor, what you do? I need you to come on here. <laughs> you, you gonna have time? You think I'm gonna meet you at Walmart? I mean, I, I mean, I'll try to accommodate you if I can. I mean, I'm willing to try to get up in there, but I mean, man, that's your opportunity to let God's power and anointing flow through you. But see, you got to be believing in God enough for that. To let his power flow through you. I heard a powerful testimony, amen. I think, it, I don't know who it was. It might have been uh, Bill Winston or somebody. But I heard this powerful testimony where he sent these ladies out on outreach. He sent these ladies out on outreach and they were just these little sweet, you know, older ladies. They, man, sent them out on outreach. And they went on the bad side of town. And there was this drug dealer. And uh, he was out there doing something, walking around, doing whatever he was doing. But then uh, what ended up happening is they went to talk to the, the drug dealer. And he said, you see that Mercedes over there? They're they watching me. So he had all these Mercedes kind of surrounding him, watching him in case anything happens. He said, you know who I am? They didn't know. But they were yielded vessels under the anointing. You know what they did? They said, okay, well, do you mind if we pray for you? <laughs> and they grabbed this man's hand. Mind you, he's being guarded by some thugs and other Mercedes. They grabbed his hand. And as soon as he touched, they touched hands, this, this brother fell out on the cement. Now, what do you think happened with the Mercedes? <laughs> What they do? What the, imagine that? That kind of had to be a weird scene. What you about to just pull out? You gonna come out on some old ladies? Just what? <laughs> and his brother got knocked down on the cement. Amen. But what happened with that? That was God's power flowing through a yielded vessel, and this was some kingpin type of person who just needed a touch. See, sometimes the anointing is gonna be spilled out when you touch somebody. It don't always happen by praying drive-by prayers and stuff like that. Sometimes you're going to have to be willing to say, give me your hand. Mm -hmm. And that anointing went out and hit them, hit that, uh, that young man. And make a long story short, he ended up getting saved. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Amen? So would God use you that way? Amen. Or are you just like, you know, I'm just regular. I like to, you know, just. Keep it to myself. The anointing is too powerful for us to keep it to ourselves. Amen? Amen. It's, it's way too powerful. Now, we got to have faith in God, though. we got to believe that God can do this. So two things I want you to be excited about. One, and look forward to this in this coming year because we're going to be preaching on it, yielded vessel. I'm a yielded vessel. I want you to come to the end of your road, the end of yourself, and just let God fill you up and do whatever he wants to do with you. Then, being that it's the new year coming up, I want you to be excited about his ability. What he can do through you, but how about what can he do for you? Is that okay if we do that? Amen. Anybody? Is it okay that we can believe God? You know you got desires in your heart because God put them there. If you still got a desire after you got saved... It's because God put it there. How many of y'all got some desires? Anybody? Okay. So go to Psalm 37 real quick. You got to believe God. God is able. And I have to share the beginning stuff with you because I don't want you to be, uh, I don't want you to get selfish or nothing, but I don't want you to, you know, feel like you can't believe God for the things he has for you either. So Psalm 37, 4. 
He says, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. The Amplified says, delight yourself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires and what? Secret petitions. Those are the deep things that you want. Amen? The deep things that you want. Verse 5 in the Amplified, commit your way to the Lord. Roll and repose each care of your load on him. Trust, lean on him, rely on him, and be confident also in him, and he will what? Bring it to pass. How many of you are comfortable in the Lord? Amen. How many of you believe that God can bring anything you believe him for to pass? Amen? Amen. How many of you got a couple things you believe in God for? Okay, go, I mean, I'm just, we, I got to give you more scripture. God, I'm, let me know, you got to really believe what you, what you believe in here. Mark 11, go over to Mark 11. Mark 11. Now, remember, at the beginning of this whole message tonight, it's about this being yielded so God can use you. And his power can flow through you. And now you can be a blessing to others. But now you're going to get your stuff too. Amen. Okay, look at your name and say, I got some stuff to get. Anybody? Yeah. That's it. Oh, God just showed up and he was just like, anybody who's serious, I'm here to bless them. Y'all be like, me. Amen. Some of y'all be cutting each other in the line. I know, I already know it. <laughs> if God was right here and he was like, okay, I'm just right to hand out these blessings, some of y'all be like, hey, hey. So like, what happened? You were so kind. At the beginning of the service, you were opening doors and letting others go before you, but now you, come on, you just stepped on my toes and everything. But that's because you got to believe. All right, Mark 11. Yeah, we're going to bring this new year in right. Mark eleven twenty two. 22, the, the, the last part of it, it says, have faith in God. Now, the Amplify says, have faith in God constantly. This is just the second part that I'm reading. What does constantly mean? All the time. Have faith in God constantly. Amen. Verse 23, I'll just read in the King James. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Now, this is us having faith in what we speak out of our mouths, but it's all stemming from our uncompromised faith in God. If I have faith in God, then now I'm not going to doubt. Amen? I'm not going to doubt. And so when it comes to your desires, let's look at verse 24. Therefore, I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire, do you have any desires? If the Bible says we can have desires, then desires aren't bad. How many of you guys got things you've been believing God for? Okay, how about this? How many of you had things you believed God for last year? How many of you got any of those? Isn't that powerful? What do we do? You know how we do it in this church? We write them down. Amen? Because if you don't write it down, it's not serious to you. It's not legit. Amen? I'm going to give you a chance to write it down, write down some desires. But now, don't write down stuff you don't believe God for. Now, here's, here's the extra instructions this year. Don't write it down if you're not really believing for it. If it's just a hope way out there that maybe you want to try to build your faith for, then maybe write it down later. But if it's a desire that you have and you know it's a desire, it's legit, and you believe that God will build your faith for that thing, then now you write it down. Amen? But, but we're going to do it a little different. You know, this year is a little different even than last year. You know, we have a greater opportunity to worship God. You know, God bless us with the praise team and all that stuff. And so we have a greater opportunity to enter into worship. But see, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you this chance to write down the desire you have. It's not for you to just, you know, for everybody to read it. But now we're going to enter into worship and then you're going to have a time to come over here and, and lay that out at the altar. Amen. 
but it'll be at the appointed time that God says so. But, you know, we got to worship, amen, because, you know, God's not a genie. He can do all things. But like I've already showed you the importance of coming in, coming into his presence. Amen. So if you got some desires, I'm going to give you a minute here and we're going to start writing those down. But he says, verse 24, therefore, I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire when you pray. So we're going to start our fast coming up on Tuesday. So what are you going to be doing? Praying. Well, when you pray, what do you do? It's OK. Shout it out. Next word. If you if you can you read it. Oh, when I pray. I got to what? Believe. Okay. That what? Hmm. Believe you receive. So if you write down desires, can you believe you receive? Amen. See, and this is what God is looking to do. Because he doesn't want you to have another year go by and you didn't get any desires. He wants us to cross that. Now, I believe the key in this is what I said earlier about being that yielded vessel and being carried into the very presence of God and letting God's power come upon you because now it's about him, it's his agenda. Think about this. If you have a desire, let's say it's a desire for whatever, you have to attach that desire with a benefit to the kingdom. That makes sense. You have to attach that desire to a benefit of the kingdom. So some of you may have a desire, let's say I'm just making it, so if you have a desire to go on vacation, you want to go to Hawaii. Well, that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. But then maybe say, okay, Lord, well, maybe, you know, how can I attach that to a benefit of the kingdom? Man, I feel like I need to go and do a Bible study on the sand or something. I'm just feeling it. But, you know, you have different desires and stuff like that. But the greater things, I'm talking about bigger things, you know. God's going to show you. See, if you have a desire for wealth and stuff like that, you really got to connect that to kingdom purpose. Otherwise, you'll get sucked into this vortex of life. And you won't be happy. Amen. So you have it be connected to a kingdom purpose. Amen. Some of you have desires for loved ones to be saved. Well, you know, that's obviously a kingdom purpose. But so I want you to have some desires, whatever it may be, just write it down. And God knows the desires of your heart. But now you pray, you believe and you receive. Now, verse 25. Okay. And when you stand praying, what does it say? Yes. Forgive who? Everyone. You know that if you have unforgiveness in your heart, you can't. What's God going to do? But I have faith, Lord. Yeah, but you have unforgiveness. So what does he say? He says, when you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any that your father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you. But if you do not forgive, neither will your father in heaven, which are your father, which is in heaven, forgive you your trespasses. So we don't want to have any unforgiveness. So let everybody go be free of that. But then be now in that place where you trust God enough. You say, I believe God can do it. I'm forgiving everybody. I don't hold anything against anybody. Now I'm going to trust God and I'm going to believe him all the way. And then now here's the other thing. Don't be hesitant with your desires. So if it's a desire, if it was a desire for you and if you haven't written anything down, take a minute to write it down now. Amen. If you can borrow some paper from your friend or something. Amen. Somebody in the chat. Let me get some paper, man, because I got to write this down. But if it's a real desire, you'll write that thing down quick. If it's a desire, it ain't going to take you a long time. Like, hmm, what is it? It ain't a desire yet. Amen? But now why am I doing this? Because I want you to be careful for nothing. Philippians chapter 4. Now all of this, everything I preached tonight was all Holy Ghost. So this is for you because I have none of it written down. So I just want you to know this is what God wants you to have, which obviously if I write it down, it still is coming from God. But sometimes God gives me a chance to think about it. He didn't give me no chance to think about this. All right. So Philippians chapter four and verse six. So be careful for nothing. Now this, this is a twofold meaning here. One, it's don't be anxious or anxiety. Don't have any anxiety about everything. 
but it's also meaning don't be cautious. Don't say, I can't ask God for that. Amen? I can't ask God for that. Well, you, everybody got to have a desire. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. Okay, prayer and supplication. So that's earnest prayer. Amen. You're, you're asking with a sincere heart, but then also this word that comes next is important with thanksgiving. What if you have a thankful heart? Like we preached on Wednesday, an attitude of gratitude. What if you show God you're really thankful for everything that he did for you last year? What do you think he can do this coming year? Amen? So he says, and with supplication, let your request be made known unto God. Now, I want you to make your request be made known, and God's going to give you the peace that surpasses all understanding, but I want you to right now, hopefully you got something written down. But now listen, now this ain't a paper that you get to take home. I forgot to give that instruction. Now those of you at home, and if you do this at home, you could pray and you know you can touch your computer or touch your phone or whatever when I get to praying over these desires. And God will bless you too, amen, with that. But those of you here, you're going to leave them at the altar. You don't get to take it back. Now I'm not, don't. I'm not trying to read it and get, you know, until you don't have to sign your name or nothing. This is an act of faith. Just write it down. So everybody got something? Amen. Come on, you got you need some more time? Amen. Yes. I'm gonna give you some more time anyway. Because well, let me make sure Brother Sean is ready. If he's ready, you guys get a little more time because I want you to worship. Yeah, Brother David. Brother David ain't no joke, man. That brother bad on them drums, ain't he? Can I get an amen right now? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Hey. Okay, so let's just enter into worship. And we'll let you guys, you know, I'm keeping track of the time. We're going to have some countdown and some fun and all that, but this is important. Just worship God right there where you are. Now, you got some desires. But you can't come to the altar yet because you got to worship. Amen? Let's take a moment. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
you, Jesus. As a people, we worship you tonight, Lord. We're believing you right now. We're believing you based on your ability and not our own. We know, Father, in the name of Jesus, that there's nothing too hard for you. We release our desires. We release the secret petitions of our hearts unto you without doubt, without wavering, without any shadow of turning. We know, O oh God of heaven, that you're able. We know, Lord, that you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can possibly ask or think according to the power that works in us. We thank you. Now, I want you right now, come out and lay your, lay your uh, prayer requests on the altar. Amen. You're not bringing them to me. You're bringing them to God. So lay them out there in faith. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He's able. He's willing. We believe him. We believe him. Mm. Now have you have you placed your request at the altar? I want to make sure everyone has done that. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. He is the God who cares. He is the God who loves. He is the God who is able. He is the God who is willing. Now, God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. It is the Father's good will, good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God wants you to receive everything that you can believe him for. Now, God wants you to leave it there in his hands. Now, see, as you have released it tonight, what you do from this moment is you just began to thank him for it. Come on. That's what believing and receiving is all about. Now you began to thank him for it. Come on. How many of you? Oh, Rabakashi, you can catch a vision of what you laid on this altar coming to pass. Come on, God, get anybody that can go there and say, you know what? I'm living now after the manifestation. I'm living in the, it has come to pass. Anybody? Now you worship God. Then you made your request be made known unto him. Now can you... Even just for a moment. Wow. What's it going to feel like? What's it going to feel like? 
when you're walking in it? Can you identify with that? See, that's what faith will do. But you got to have a revelation. See, come on. A revelation. As this is done. God says, this is done. It's a finished work. If you believe it, you can receive it. But now, are you going to celebrate me for what I've done? See, listen, church, we're not in the realm. We're not stuck in this realm of time. God is above it. So as you laid it out in faith, God is already on the other side of, oh, that's done. He's already on the other side of what's next. What else you want? Because I've already done that. I've already completed that. Yeah. That's where he's taking us, church. That's where he's taking us. I told you we were, re we were uh, preaching this uh, series on reaping your harvest. Y'all remember that part where we God was telling us that the reaping time is going to overflow and overlap with the, the sowing time. And all of a sudden, you barely sowed and you're already reaping and you're just going and you're like, whoa. See, God is saying, you lay these desires out before me in faith. You believe me. You go from this place tonight and thank me for what I've already done. Go over to God. I'll be already working on the next stuff that I have for you. We got four minutes. Huh. What you gonna do, man? God is able. You already laid it out. You did your part. Now we're gonna praise him and thank him. We're hearing our prayers. I believe him. So, three, well, we got three minutes. So listen, listen, we're going we're gonna to step into this new year, right? And so, as an act of faith, you know, as this time is counting down, you got to make a step. So you might have to get out your seat because you got to step into, y'all with me? You got to step into your next breakthrough you got to step into something that maybe you weren't experiencing before but this is a spiritual move we're a people of order we have worshiped God we have brought our desires to him and we didn't bring anything that we can't really believe him for so we're in faith now we're about to celebrate like some kids, come on, who got their stuff that they were believing God for. We're going to celebrate like some kids. They wanted something for Christmas and they got it. Uh-oh. It's coming. It's coming. He's already done it. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Yet in a bottle of our car, she said it about that. Can you feel it? Oh, the baby, she said. It's coming. Woo hoo hoo! Glory to God. Yet in a bottle of our car, she said. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for hearing our prayer. We thank you for answering our prayer. Oh, Rebebeka, Cheta. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Here it is. You got to step. Come on, step, step. Hey, let's bring it in at the altar. Come on. Step in, step in. 
step in, step in, come on, step in, oh, the baby kata, step in, woohoo, get in the bar, step in, oh, the baby kata, get in the bar, thank you, Lord, get in the bar, kata, get in the bar, kata, Oh, the Baba Sete. Woo! Get in the Baba Sete. Four, three, two, one. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Happy New Year. 2018.
get brother. Brother. about this year? Amen. amen. It's already started. Amen. And the best is yet ahead for you and your family. We already said it earlier, or actually what, yesterday now? We said 2018, then y'all y'all were with me, right? We said 2018 is going to be my best year yet. Still believe it? Well, guess what? It's already started. Amen. So let's be excited. Amen. Let's clap it up. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. Let's clap it up for, once again, the praise team and 
everybody, the audio, visual, everybody involved with this. Thank you, everybody that watched us online. We thank you that you brought this year in with us. Let's make it great. Amen. It's already done. Let's be a people that walk it out. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Stretch your hands to heaven. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that you blessed us to be here. We thank you that everything that happened tonight was according to your plan. Lord, we seal it right now in faith. We stamp it with the blood of Jesus that everything that you have in store for this body of believers will come to pass. We see it as done. We should not waver or falter. We know, God, that you're in control. And we receive right now Holy Ghost power. We welcome you to take over our daily lives. No matter where we are, we welcome you to take over and flow through us as yielded vessels. We praise you and honor you. Bless this, your people now. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. All right. On the way out, you got to tell somebody, I believe it and I receive it. Amen. And then you add to it, 2018 is my year. Amen? All right, praise God.